season, preparing our hearts really for Christmas and connecting with God's spirit and uh, not only the joy of Christmas, but also that sense of anticipation and waiting, that aching, that longing. Uh, there's a, a great banner you can see on the side of the sanctuary over there. It's a quote from Isaiah 9. It's a, a messianic uh, prophecy, really, uh, that for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And so even, you know, hundreds of years before Jesus came to the earth, there was many prophecies about his coming. And uh, we just rejoice in that together. So we want to uh, kind of do a few Christmas songs this morning with a little bit of a different twist. Uh, and so we're going to invite you to participate with us. Uh, this first song is For Unto Us uh, and Open the Eyes of My Heart. And so I'm going to have you clap with me. Is that all right? For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The child is born, the sun is given, the sun is given, born. For unto us a child is born, the sun is given, the sun is given, the Messiah, the Messiah, and all to see him. A child is born, a son is given, a son is given, the Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. A child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us, for unto us a child is born. Sing holy, 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 holy. For unto us, for unto us a child is born. Let's give God some praise, church. Thank you, Jesus, for coming.
Amen. God is with us. That beautiful name that we often hear at Christmas, Emmanuel, God is with us. God, we just look to you this morning. We want to lift up your name. We thank you for the promise of your presence with us. We thank you that we can open our hearts to you any time of the year, any time, day or night, not, certainly not just at Christmas time. And we just rejoice in your name this morning. Praise again, church. Mm. Again, we want to share this song with you. Um, it's probably a familiar hymn with a little bit of a different approach to it. Come now long, expect Jesus. It just kind of really captures the heart of the Advent season um, where we have this ache, we have this longing, and sometimes we can't even um, identify what that's from, but it's really placed there, I think, by God's Spirit uh, in the heart of not only every human being, but I think of all created beings uh, having that longing uh, for Christ and for the Messiah. And, and even though we, you know, we've celebrated Christmas, the birth and the, and the presence of God with us you know, more than 2,000 years ago, we still have that longing uh, because of the fulfillment, the desire for the fulfillment of God's kingdom and God's will to be done here on earth as and in heaven.
the hearts of shepherds, you draw the hearts of kings, and even as a baby, you were changing everything. You call me to your kingdom before your lips could speak, and even as a baby, you were reaching out for me. May that ring out through our hearts and through our lives, that desire, come thou long expected king. Uh, we know the story is not finished yet, amen? Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for worshiping this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is uh, the Magnificat, it's a song of Mary. Uh, this will be projected on the screen, and uh, I'll ask the congregation to join me in reading the part that's in bold. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the, slow, the lowly. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. Well, this morning we, uh, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we want to give you an opportunity to reflect on some of the truths in Advent, uh, maybe in a, a way that's new to you, maybe a little uh, unfamiliar. Uh, we want to give you a space, really, to uh, reflect on some of the, the lyrics of the songs and hymns that we sing at Christmas time, some of the scriptures that we hear. And so I'm going to be kind of a tour guide for you, if you will, during this uh, time together where we're uh, reflecting on Advent. Uh, the, the flow and format of what we're about to experience is something that's similar to uh, what's called Taze, uh, which is uh, a form of prayer, a form of worship, um, and it actually comes from a community that's um, based in a little village called Taze in France, and it's been... Um, in existence probably about 50 or so years, and it's um, really a, a gathering of uh, Christians who are committed to prayer and to worship 
in kind of a, a very simplistic way of living. Uh, and that has caught on. Uh, over the last probably 40 or 50 years, literally thousands of people, often young people from all over the world, kind of take a, a spiritual uh, pilgrimage, if you will, to this little community in France uh, and just gather for, for prayer and for worship. And so uh, if you're curious about that, you want to know more information, there's uh, an insert in, our, in your bulletin that you're going to need this morning. So if you did not grab a bulletin on your way in, Pastor Josh in the back has some extra of these. You'll want one of these because you'll be pretty, at least have someone next to you that has one. So if you don't have one of these, maybe slip your hand up and Josh or some of the uh, hospitality team will help you out. But there's a little information there about today, about their community. There's a website you can check out later if you're curious. Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna jump right in to this Advent today experience, and there'll be kind of a flow of some uh, some spoken word, some silence, some music, and it's all designed to give you an opportunity to kind of experience some inward quietness and just opening your heart to God and. Um, hopefully a restful way uh, this morning. So I want to draw your attention to the insert, and I'll start at the top there. I'll, I'll read this for us. This Advent-like longing is at the heart of Christian spirituality. C.S. Lewis claimed that in this life, the Advent-like stab of longing serves as a spiritual homing device placed deep in our heart by God to lead us back to him. Advent trains us to ache again. Of all the seasons of the church year, Advent is the time to acknowledge, feel, and even embrace the joyful anguish of longing for Messiah's birth and the world's rebirth. And so we sing our aching songs while we light our candles and we wait. This is Advent longing, and we couldn't imagine it any other way. And so Advent really is a, a season. Uh, a lot of times we think of Advent as, well, there's the Christmas decorations, got to you know, shop online or get to the mall. You know, it's very hectic. We have various gatherings uh, with family or friends or work, whatever it may be. It's obviously a very stressful time for students of wrapping up the semester. And so I just want to give you a pause from all that hecticness and help you recognize that Advent really is a time to uh, be still and to feel some of that ache that God has planted in our hearts, that longing for Christ, that longing for Messiah, uh, for that longing for the kingdom to come, as we sung about already this morning. So let us begin with uh, these intercessions. I'll read the italicized, and if you could respond in the bold, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom, Coming from the Most High, you reign over all things from one end of the earth to the other. Come and teach us the way of wisdom. Lord Jesus. O King of nations, you alone can, can, can fulfill their desires. You make opposing nations one. Come with outstretched arm and save us. O morning star, splendor of light eternal and bright sun of justice, come and shine on all who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. So we just sang this hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, kind of a very famous Advent hymn, if you will. I want to give us a moment to kind of Experience it in a little bit of a different way. We're just going to read the lyrics together, the first verse, and then we'll just have a pause for some silence. Uh, during that silence, if you want to just be still, you can close your eyes, you can pray, you can just listen, take a moment to uh, rest. There's also a little um, prayer that's written there for silent reflection as well. So let's read these words together. They'll be on the screen. Come thou long expected Jesus, Born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation. 
hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. And so I give you a few moments of silence for reflection. God, we want to admit that we long for you. Jesus, may your presence be very real in our lives. Spirit, may you soothe our souls with the salve of your presence. Amen. And in like manner, uh, O come, O come, Emmanuel. You know, we sang, Emmanuel is the name of God. It means God is with us. It's It's a promise, and it's, it's very real, it's very tangible because Christ came in the flesh. So this isn't just kind of a um, philosophical theory. Uh, that's the whole idea of, maybe you're familiar with the term incarnation. So incarnation just means to be with someone, right? And so we all get to experience this maybe with, with family members or friends or coworkers or strangers on the street, you know? Even in the midst of our own interior loneliness that we may feel, we know that we're ultimately not alone, that God is with us, that God has surrounded us with people. And so we're uh, calling out, in a sense, God's name once again, Emmanuel, saying, God, be with us. Help us to experience your presence, your incarnational um, presence with us. So let's read together the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. And so we we wait in mourning, longing for the Son of God to appear and be present in our lives. So again, I give you a moment of silent reflection. Um, There's also a reading there if you choose to use that as well. So I want to share with you a song that's uh, a song I wrote a number of years ago. It's called Consolation, which is really that the desire of that longing is really to be consoled by the presence of God. Uh, the words are very simple. It's kind of a, a more of like a repetitive chant prayer type song. Um, gives us an experience, an opportunity to uh, be genuine, be real about that ache, that longing that is within each of us. In the deepest place silent space trust in the deepest place longing in the silent space Sing along if you'd like. In the deepest place, longing in 
I recognize that um, silence is very difficult for probably a lot of people, um, especially if you're not used to that, especially if your kind of uh, cultural norm is to be filled with noise and busyness. Um, I think especially here in kind of a, a westernized culture, uh, even if we didn't grow up here, but we're certainly influenced, it, influenced by it now, um, we, we kind of run from silence. We reject it. Uh, it seems scary. And so I just want to give you some thoughts to think about, maybe reframe silence a little bit for you this morning. Uh, on the back side of your insert, there's a section, it's a long section, I'll read through it, you can just follow along as I read. It's about prayer, lament, thanks, and silence. If we take as our guide the oldest prayer book, the biblical Psalms, we note two main forms of prayer. One is a lament and cry for help. The other is thanksgiving and praise to God. On a more hidden level, there's a third kind of prayer without demands or explicit expression of praise. In Psalm 131, for instance, there's nothing but quietness and confidence. I have calmed and quieted my soul Hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. At times, prayer becomes silent. Peaceful communion with God can do without words. I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like the satisfied child who has stopped crying and is in its mother's arms, so can my soul be with me in the presence of God. Prayer, then, needs no words, maybe not even thoughts. How is it possible to reach inner silence? Sometimes we are apparently silent, and yet we have great discussions within, struggling with imaginary partners, conversations in our mind with others or with ourselves. Calming our souls requires a kind of simplicity. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. Silence means recognizing that my worries can't do much. Silence means loving, leaving to God what is beyond my reach and capacity. A moment of silence, even if very short, is like a holy stop, a Sabbath rest, a truce of worries. The turmoil of our thoughts can be compared to the storm that struck the disciples' boat on the Sea of Galilee while Jesus was sleeping. Like them, we may be helpless, full of anxiety, and incapable of calming ourselves. But Christ is able to calm and to come to our help as well. As he rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm, he can also quiet our heart when it is agitated by fears and worries. Remaining silent, we trust and hope in God. One psalm suggests that silence is even a form of praise. We're used to reading at the beginning of Psalm 65, praise is due to you, O God. And this translation follows the Greek text, but actually the Hebrew text printed in most Bible reads, silence is praise to you, O God. When words and thoughts come to an end, God is praised in silent wonder and admiration. 
Silence makes us ready for a new meeting with God. In silence, God's word can reach the hidden corners of our hearts. In silence, it proves to be sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, from Hebrews 4. In silence, we stop hiding before God, and the light of Christ can reach and heal and transform even what we are ashamed of. And so kind of in that uh, spirit of silent awe and wonder, I want to invite us to read the opening verse to Silent Night, often a very famous and familiar hymn that we sing at Christmas. We sing here Christmas Eve service. Um, and just give us a moment of silence uh, after we sing or read the lyrics to uh, just to be in awe and wonder of Jesus. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. And so like this Psalm 131 invites our souls to be like a weaned child and, and God to be like our mother just holding us like you can picture Mary holding baby Jesus. Allow yourself to experience some comfort and some quiet in God's presence. I just want to share a song with you that I wrote a number of years ago that just really is an invitation to wait, simply just waiting on the Lord. You know, really, no matter what's going on in your life right now, I, I'm probably, uh, I feel a bit confident that there is an aspect of you needing to just waiting on the Lord. It's cold outside and the wind blows on my face And no one knows if the sun will shine again Well, it's cold outside and the wind blows on my face And no one if the sun will shine again Wait on the Lord my friend Wait for the Lord to come Wait Don't know when or where. So is God's Spirit moving like the air? Wait on the Lord, my friend. Wait 
wait on the Lord, my friend. Wait to So in that spirit of waiting for the Lord, um, I want to uh, teach you, invite you to sing with me. A, this is a today song called Wait for the Lord. The words are there in your order there. So I'll sing it first and invite you to sing with me. And again, it's in that same spirit of Advent that we wait. to do simply that. Wait for the Lord. Keep watch. Take heart. And I'd like to uh, draw your attention once again to the insert. It's kind of a bringing all this together, wrapping up this Advent reflection time. Uh, really, two things that make a connection, I think, between both silence and that sense of waiting and longing, and also love. And so on the back side of the insert, there's a section at the bottom that says silence and love. I'll read that for you, and then share a few other thoughts. Christ says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's from John 15. And we need silence in order to welcome these words and put them into practice. When we are agitated and restless, we have so many arguments and reasons not to forgive and not to love too easily. But when we have calmed and quieted our soul, these reasons turn out to be quite insignificant. Maybe we sometimes avoid silence, preferring whatever noise, words, or distraction, because inner peace is a risky thing. It makes us empty and poor. It disintegrates bitterness and leads us to the gift of ourselves. Silent and poor, our hearts are overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, filled with unconditional love. Silence is a humble yet secure path to loving. So I invite you today and in the remainder of this Advent season just to continue to say yes to God, say yes to love. Uh, there's a little quote that I put on the uh, bottom there 
Uh, from a favorite author of mine, Gerald May. This is from the book, The Awakened Heart. I highly recommend it. And he says, in saying yes to love again and again, we find a sense of our place in things, a glimpse of who we really are and how very precious each one of us is within the wondrous infinity of creation. And so I'd like to close our uh, Advent reflection time with a simple song. This is a little one that I wrote. It's really just kind of a prayer and really an invitation um, to be, to love, to be love, and to be loved. So God, we just thank you for this time to be still, be in your presence. Once again, hear your voice. Once again, wait for you. Once again, allow ourselves to be and to love and to be loved by you. May we be an expression of that love and that light in this world that is often filled with despair and darkness. It's in the beautiful name of Jesus we pray. Thank you so much, Pastor Brandt, for that uh, wonderful reminder, just that um, in a season to, to quiet ourselves, to reflect on the longings of our heart, to kind of have that ache uh, and that recognition of our need for Christ and what this season represents, which is that need fulfilled in the coming of Christ. It's so ironic in a way and somewhat tragic that our culture has made this season of Advent, of Christmas, so much about rush and busyness and, and really consuming. And sometimes I think even in the church, we fall into that trap as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, my name is Josh. I'm one of the pastors here as well at First Baptist, and it's just uh, my pleasure to say welcome and, and to convey what an honor it is for all of us to be worshiping together this morning. Um, I want to give you an opportunity today to connect if you're looking for a way to just um, find out more information about the church or to find out ways that you can be involved here. There's a connect card in the pews in front of you. Uh, when I want to encourage you to grab that, fill that out, especially if you're a visitor, and just drop that in the offering basket as it comes around in just a few minutes, and that'll be a way for myself or one of the other leaders here at First Baptist to follow up with you and get you uh, more information or help you get plugged in with things going on at the church. This uh, season of Advent, as we reflect on and long for the coming of Christ, it's a reminder of this idea that's really central to the Christian faith, which is the idea of the incarnation. 
um, that God, the Word, became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us, that Christ came uh, and took on, you know, the human form, took on humanity in fullness and dwelt with us. And really that basis, that idea of incarnation, of God being with us, is really the foundation for um, missions, for what we do as Christians, that as Christ came to us, so we go and we incarnate ourselves to others. We go out into the world in that same spirit of taking on um, the situations, the, the suffering, the cultures, the conflicts, whatever it is that God has called us to do to make ourselves present to the world as Christ has been present to us. So in this season, we, we want to take a moment this morning just to draw your attention to a few ways that we as a church family are trying to make ourselves uh, incarnate through missions, both just in the community around our church, where we always want to be manifesting the grace and glory of God, as well as around the world. Uh, as we send and as we participate in places that God has called us to go. So a few things for you to be aware of this morning um, and to be excited about is one, on your way out today, um, as you go kind of by the front entrance, you'll see a table with a little Christmas tree on it. Every year we do an item drive uh, to put together gifts for our neighbors who are staying in Craig's Place shelter, which meets downstairs throughout the winter months. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to just convey our love and our community to those who are staying here in the shelter. And I really do encourage you to kind of be missional in that sense of grabbing some information about different items that you can purchase. There's things like uh, warm gloves, hand warmers, uh, cough, you know, gift cards to local coffee shops, just little ways to bless and honor our community members. So please stop there, and that's one way we just continue to be um, reaching out to our local community. Also, I want to invite your prayer. Um, some of you know that every couple years, our Hub Youth Group sends a group of high school students to the nation of Belize to partner with a church that we've been partnering with now for about five years. Um, and so this year is one of our Belize years, and I don't know how we're going to manage it, but we are sending 28 people um, to Belize this year, which is just so much bigger than any other team that we've had before. Uh, students, high school students are already uh, in the preparation for that, have been preparing for months. They're doing fundraising, they're doing uh, all sorts of paperwork and stuff to get there. We're having team meetings, so please be praying for us as we continue to prepare our hearts, to prepare financially, to prepare resources, uh, team leaders, all of that for the trip in April, which will be over a student spring break. Um, if you would like to find out more about ways that you can donate, we're definitely doing a lot of fundraising, or ways that you can be praying for the team, please come talk to me. I'd love to give you more information. We just love that partnership and continue to want to bless uh, our friends and neighbors in um, the community of San Antonio and Belize. Finally, um, we are really blessed this morning to be honoring and kind of commissioning one of our college students, Hannah Jin. Hannah has been part of this community for years. She's been a leader in our college ministry, leading things like our Agape worship team, a growth group for uh, UMass women, and lots of other roles and ways that she's been part of our church family. Hannah is graduating this semester, uh, one semester early, so that she can fulfill God's call on her life to do missions in Mexico for the next six months. So we've invited her to share her faith story and just a little bit about what she'll be doing next semester. So, Hannah, thank you so much for being here. Hi, good morning. Um, so, all of, for all of my life, I grew up knowing who Jesus was, and I grew up in a Christian home and naturally found myself adopting the beliefs that my parents raised me on. However, it wasn't until I was 12 that I came to truly know Jesus and gave my life to the Lord. Before this, I realized that I didn't really know God. I knew who he was and what he had done for me, but I didn't really know him on a personal, intimate level. Because in my eyes, he was just a distant God. And so I struggled a lot with my identity because it wasn't rooted in Christ, and I didn't know who I was as his child. But it was at a camp called Awakening Teen Camp where I encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time and truly came to know who I was as a follower of Christ and as a daughter of God. My identity was no longer rooted in the ideals of this world, but in the love and grace that the Lord had shown me. And so coming into college, I continued to walk with God and grow in my relationship with him, but I never imagined how life-changing my college years would be. These past three and a half years have probably been the most transformative years of my life, and yet I have been taken through both the most difficult and the best seasons of my life so far. I experienced so much hardship in my circumstances during these years, but it was in those times when the Lord taught me to trust in him and to surrender my fears and worries to him. It was in these times that I had to look to God and to seek him that much more. And through the trials, I've learned how faithful the Lord has been to me and how he used those hardships to grow me and mature me. 
It was during these past few years that I have come to learn these things, and because of that, he has given me so much joy and freedom. Even with these difficult seasons, God has also brought me through seasons of incredible joy and spiritual maturity. College has taught me to surrender my plans to the Lord because he is ultimately in control. I've come to know that the Lord is so intentional in where he places me in my life, whether that is in terms of the season that I am in or in the physical places that he brings me to. And with that said, I came to UMass Amherst not really wanting to be here or knowing why God placed me here, but I can now say that his reason is so evident to me. I came to FBC the very first Sunday of my freshman year, and ever since then, I have been coming every week. FBC has been a place for me to grow in ways that I have never grown before and has given me a community that I could grow alongside with. It has really provided a community of brothers and sisters that I never had before in a place where the Lord has challenged me to serve him and his people in new ways. He opened up doors for me to serve on the Agape worship team and as growth group leader, and I have grown so much through serving the Lord in this way. Um, being at FBC has only helped me to cultivate an even bigger heart to be his servant as I transition out of college and to step out of my comfort zone in serving him. And so I'm excited to finally have the opportunity to serve him in exactly that way in Mexico for the next six months. I have decided to graduate a semester early, leaving my friends and family in order to embark on a six month journey to a rural village called San Telmo in Baja, California, Mexico. I have been serving in this community on one month mission trips for the past four summers, and I now feel that God is calling me for a longer term to serve this community. Um, there, a team of 15 of us will be serving alongside the local church called Vena Cristo and the primary and secondary school called El Porvenir. We will be serving as English and extracurricular teachers, leaders, and ministers in the local community, while also partaking in evangelism and outreach to other regions of Mexico. While serving as leaders and missionaries here, my team and I will also receive hands-on training on how to be ministers of the gospel. I personally will be a head teacher for third grade third graders during the day and the head soccer coach for the students after school, while also being on the mission trips leadership team as a media person. While serving in San Temel over the past few summers, I have seen the gospel transform this community, and I am so honored to have been a small part of that. But I really feel like the Lord is calling me to surrender everything that I have for, for him in order to be fully used by him in Mexico, where there is nothing but dirt on the ground. I am choosing to say yes and to obey the call that he has given me. He has physically opened up so many doors for me to take this step of faith to go, and so I'm going because I want to obey his calling. Because I love him and I have experienced the love that he has shown me, I want to simply serve him out of that overflow. It is a privilege to say yes to him and whatever he has in store for me, I'm choosing to obey and to serve him because he is worthy. Thank you. So we want to just uh, pray right now as we uh, pray for the offering. We also want to pray kind of a commissioning and sending prayer for Hannah, just that God would work in San Telmo, would work through you, and, and that we as a church would continue to just hold you in our hearts and in our prayers as you go kind of representing the kingdom. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have this reminder this morning that as we uh, stop, as we pause, as we recognize that there's this ache within us for your love, for your grace, for what this season represents, God, that we can go and, and be part of answering that same expectation for others. God, that you have put that mission uh, on our hearts, that you have called us to be your hands, your feet, your voice, uh, resources to a hurting and broken world. We pray for Hannah this morning and ask that as she prepares to go out from our community and our fellowship, that you would go before her, that you would prepare the path before her, that you would be uh, working in San Telmo both before and during her time ministering there, and that um, you would just use her mightily, God, that your spirit would be at work in her to bless especially the students, the young people that she'll be working with and teaching and coaching. Would you be with her team and help them grow in fellowship and unity and help all of them reflect the glory of who you are and the good news of your gospel, God? We ask that we as a church community would continue to have our hearts uh, in, just sparked by this idea that we are on mission for you. And God, that that would be something that's a glorious reflection of your love. As we prepare to take our offering this morning, would you use these gifts to further your kingdom, both in our community and the places you've called us to invest around the world. 
We thank you for your love and that we're called to be a part of reflecting that love to this world. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. down from heaven humbly you came God of all creation here with us in a starlit manger Emmanuel the Lord, let all that is within us adore. Wise men bring their treasures, shepherds bow low. As you go out today, church, just a reminder that if you want to find out more about uh, Hannah's trip to Mexico, she'll actually be in the lobby with some flyers and some information, so stop by and uh, chat with her, see how you can support, partner with, or pray for her. Also, do want to encourage you to stop by that table uh, to find out about the item drive for uh, Craig's Place Shelter and those that are staying there. As you go out today, might you go uh, feeling the love that Christ has for you 
and being that love to a world in need. Go as his hands, his feet, his voice. Amen.